Yo, 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 guys, we're back again today. Today we'll be talking about something amazing. We'll be talking about a airlines that was started up in Africa in a very famous airlines, probably the most famous airlines uh, around the world that came out of Africa. And today we're going to talk about it. So let's get right into it, all right? So today we're talking about the Ethiopian Airlines. Now, the Ethiopian Airlines was established in 1946 with their first flight to Cairo, Egypt. The airlines was started by a joint venture between the government, Trans World Airlines, and American Airlines. The first five planes that were purchased were C-47s, and these were C-47 aircrafts. As more flights were successful, the airlines would soon fly to more places such as Djibouti and other locations. The demand for flight service became so high, it became so high that by the end of 1946, the government ordered four more C-47 Skytrains. Now, all four of the planes were ex-U.S. military aircrafts, which meant they had very, very few comforts. And in 1947, international routes were added to the airline's flights, and three more Skytrains were purchased. These aircrafts were enhanced with luxury layouts and were the first to wear the Ethiopian livery on the outside of the plane. Soon after, though, in 1950, Two Khan 240 aircrafts were bought by the airlines, then a third one was bought after that. These aircraft's performance were higher and they were fully furnished, so they could definitely fly higher and they were fully furnished. These planes were used for foreign routes and could fly higher, like I just stated, due to pressurized cabins. At the time, most of the staff was Ethiopian, but foreigners still held a lot of the very, very important positions. So in 1953, the Ethiopian government negotiated with the TWA. This negotiation was aimed at trying to make all Ethiopian flights all Ethiopian employees. Now, once this negotiation took place, Alimayo Ababa was appointed the first Ethiopian commander of the airlines. Soon after, the National Airline Training Project was set up in Addis Ababa. And this was to train future technicians, pilots, and other personnel. Soon after, the airline established its own maintenance facility in Addis Ababa. This was a major plus for the airlines. This facility was very much a plus because it reduced the need for overseas maintenance. As this facility improved and grew, it housed, maintained, and upgraded its own planes as well as other airlines in the region. As the airlines did better, they purchased more planes. Soon, DC-6B Cloudmasters were purchased as well. These planes were used uh, on the long routes due to its four engines and 71 seat capacity. In the beginning of the 1960s, the jet age began and the airlines bought a Boeing 720B to compete with the rest of the world. This purchase also created a problem. The airfield that had been used since 1936 did not have a long enough runway to land the Boeing. We must note also as well, Ethiopia was the first African airline to order a Boeing 720B. So the airlines created a whole new airport and headquarters for or to accommodate this new airplane. Soon after the first air link was established and a new east to west service was established as well. This was the first air link from east to west Africa and back from west Africa to east Africa. In 1965 the airlines made major changes. Just a little time before those changes they bought six more DC-3 planes. Though these planes were aging they were great for delivering cargo and other goods around the country. This year would show a big change for the company and the airlines became a share company from just being a corporation or a shared company. The airlines also rearranged its name as well. Soon after in 1977, a flight simulator was bought by the airlines and this made pilot training all in-house instead of having to send pilots to different countries to receive training. Now over the years, more planes were bought and upgraded. In 1984, Ethiopian Airlines attracted the world's attention as it flew one of the Boeing's 
767 aircrafts from New York City to Ethiopia in just 13 and a half hours. This flight was very important and it set a new world record for distance in a commercial twin engine jet. From 1989 to 1995, many developments within the airlines happened as well. The cargo management department was established as well as the airline's engineering division who opened a jet engine test facility that could ground test engines up to 100 pounds of thrust. In 1996, the airlines had hit its 50th anniversary mark and the airline's flights stretched from China to the Middle East, from India also to Europe. Soon after, in 1998, the airlines had another landmark event and this year would be the start of the services to Washington DC with twice a week services. New York soon followed after that as well. The Sheba Miles Frequent Flyers program also was launched. In the following years, night flights were also introduced as well, as well as infrastructure upgrades to accommodate passengers that had layovers or layover flights in Ethiopia. Ethiopian airlines have become a success story the airlines even achieved many awards from different organizations such as the African Aviation Journal. The airlines were praised for their passenger growth, network expansion, financial performance, customer care, and modernization. With this progress, the airlines made history and bought 35 new airplanes in 2009 and signed a contract to manage A-Sky for five years. A-Sky is a passenger airline founded by many West African governments and its headquarters reside in Togo. This event was historical and was a historical event as well because this was the first intra-African cooperation airline business. The airline soon after locked in more agreements to fly to more places around the world and in 2011, Ethiopian Airlines joined Star Alliance. In 2012, Ethiopian Airlines created a second hub in Togo in West Africa, and the airlines are also a major shareholder in A-Sky as well as its management. Soon after, the airlines bought bigger and more expensive planes as well. They flew to more destinations around the world as well as buying more shares in other African airlines. Ethiopian Airlines also signed an MOU with Djibouti International Airport for sea to air and air to sea cargo transport of goods in East Africa. The airlines was the first in Africa to graduate 26 pilots trained with multi-crew pilot license or MPLs. In 2014, Ethiopian Airlines took order of four Boeing 787s which increased their number to 10 of those types of aircrafts. The Ethiopian Aviation Academy joined the International Air Transportation Association's Global Training Partner Network as an International Air Transport Association Authorized Training Center as well. Now in 2015, Ethiopian Airlines launched their first all-woman flight. Everything was women, ran by women. In this flight, every detail, pilot, steward, and other personnel were women, as well as the call centers back in Ethiopia were all women. The CEO said that this was done to empower women and that women from around the world should take a career in the airline business, especially other African women. The airlines also received 21 awards that year as well. It was also ranked sixth most dependable airlines in the world and 751 trainees graduated in different fields from the Ethiopian Airlines Aviation Academy as well. So today we learned about African Airlines. This is the airlines that I've always been told about. When I went to DC, I had friends in DC, they told me I should get on this airlines. I heard the most beautiful women are on this airlines. Ethiopian women are on this airlines. Yo, I gotta go one day. We all need to get on this airlines and support Ethiopian Airlines and go from America to Ethiopia, Ethiopia to wherever we're at in the world. And yo, today we learned about another African Airlines Corporation company and yo until next time I'm out one love peace. What's up? What's up? Hey! Shalom! What up? Hi! Africa!